Hi guys, this is Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be going over the difference between Adobe's Mask Tracker and Mocha's Planar Tracker. So let's take a look at a successful track inside of Adobe Premiere. So for mask tracking in Premiere, you apply an effect and then you select a shape, you align the shape to the object that you want to mask track through the scene, and then you simply hit track forward. In this case, we're using a blur. Adobe Premiere and After Effects Creative Cloud have this powerful tool for tracking masks. This tool is excellent for tracking garbage masks on rigid objects or for isolating color correction, blurs, and effects, but the key word there is rigid objects. You can see that this tracks this blur really nicely through the scene, and you know, we'll probably have to do a fade off as the license plate leaves the scene, but that's not really a big deal. We'll just delete these keyframes and then we'll animate like an opacity change here at the end. But the key point is that it gets you results really fast for license plate blurs and witness protection blurs, stuff like that. Adobe's Mask Tracker is also featured inside of After Effects, but in this case we're going to show you what happens when we try to track an organic object. We're simply going to draw our articulated mask right around this guy's head. Just like, let's make sure that we get the right shape. And we're going to adjust the curves how we like it, make sure that the shape is exactly how we want it, and then we're going to use the mask tracker to track forward. It's going to be pretty simple though. We just open up our layer, select our mask, and then we select the mask we want to track, and we go over to our tracker window and hit track. Now, it's fast. And it is sticking on, kind of, and it is even sticking on even though we get a spray over his face, and that's impressive. But, on closer inspection, we're going to notice a couple of things. Firstly, the mask doesn't really stay aligned where we need to go, and then secondly, it makes a keyframe on every frame, so we really don't have any leeway when we need to adjust our shape back on top of this guy's head. Now that's problematic. So, what you may not know is that in After Effects is Mocha for After Effects, which gives you even more power for advanced tracking and roto masking challenges. It might not be clear how these tools are different, so I'm going to show you some of these differences. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our project, make sure our settings match, and then we're going to look at our guy's head here. We're going to select our X splines. Now, X splines are very simple to use. They just are like a rope and pulley system. You relax for curves and pull tight for corners, just like this. And then we're going to track this through the scene. Now what you'll notice really quickly is that, yes, it still stays with it, um, and it still has the same offset problems that After Effects has, but we have control over how to correct the shape as this guy's head turns through time. So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the shape, and then Mocha is tweening between the tracking data that it has and the shape data that I'm making. From here, we simply export the shape data as Mocha Shape Data for After Effects, copy it to the clipboard, and then back in After Effects, we select our layer and go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask, and we end up with a nice mask on top of our layer. We can also paste this data in as an effect by going to Edit, Paste, and this respects edge feathering that we do inside of Mocha, which is not really an option that you have inside of the Mask Tracker, so that's another difference. Now, another thing that Mocha can do is link masks to tracks. So we're going to open up this Ferris wheel shot inside of After Effects, and we're going to try to use the mask tracker on the side of this Ferris wheel. And because of the way the mask tracker works, it's going to do its best, but we'll notice very quickly that even though we've made a nice shape, when we hit track forward, it's just not going to stick to the location that we're trying to get it to stick to. So, cue Mocha, okay? Because what we're going to do here is we're going to load this very same shot inside of Mocha by going to track in Mocha for After Effects, okay? And inside of Mocha for After Effects, we're going to draw some splines around the side of these axles here so that we get the most data that we can, and we're going to track that forward. Now the cool thing about this is this data is not going to be my final data and we can add on to it at any time. So I just added a new shape to give myself more information to track as we move off screen. So once I'm satisfied with my track, I can check it and then I can go ahead and take my X-spline, draw a new shape, just like we were trying to draw inside of After Effects, and then I can take that shape, adjust it, and then I can go to Link to Track right over here, and we link it to the layer that we originally used to track the side of the Ferris wheel. Now all we have to do is correct our shape based on that offset, and then very quickly we will be able to export this back to After Effects. So I'm just going to adjust this and make sure that it looks correct over time because remember it's not going to stick perfectly we still have to adjust the shape and then once we're satisfied with that we go to export shape data we go to edit paste mocha mask instead of after effects and perfect we can use a similar technique for unlinking obscured tracks so what do i mean by that well if we look at this shot here we've got this guy running and if we tried to track the whole background we would not do a very good job 
because the guy would interrupt our track. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take an X spline and we're going to draw around this side of the field here to track this background. Let's say we wanted moving titles to follow along with it. Now we're going to move the grid and surface tool over to the right just so that we can have a nice offset so you can see what we're doing. And then we're going to go to link to track and we're going to link to none. Now what that's going to do is that's going to read all the data that moves under that shape as if it were a scanner. So as we track, you see the shape doesn't move, but the track does. That's because the shape and the track are independent. That means we're getting our data from two different places. And that's another big difference between us and the mask tracker. I can also start to link unlimited shapes to this track, which means if I wanted to, I could split up the background with multiple shapes and they would all follow the same track without having to be retracked. That's the power of Mocha. So enough about easy tracks. What do you do when you want to mask organic shapes? Well, that's where we really start to shine. So here's a thing about Mocha. If we wanted to try to track this girl inside of After Effects using the mask tracker, it wouldn't work very well. So we're going to just go ahead and open her up in Mocha for After Effects, and we're going to start drawing shapes around her. Now, when we roto, we want to roto paper doll style, so I'm splitting her head up separately. And again, you'll notice I'm using X blinds to drive our shape building. When we track this through the scene, what we're going to do is we're going to track this from the area of the most detail to the area of least detail, and then we're going to start adjusting our shapes over time. In this case, I'm using the transform tool to adjust either multiple or even single points at once, and then I'm aligning them to the edge of her face because, again, Mocha is going to tween between our tracking data and the shape adjustments that we make. So this gives us a really powerful option to really adjust our shapes based on motion blur and based on what the camera is doing to the image of this girl, okay? Because, you know, this is a digital camera, so we're going to have a lot of warping just because of shutter speed, that kind of thing. But this is how Mocha saves you time. Mocha cuts your roto time in half by literally cutting the amount of keyframes you make down to about a third, okay? And I can vouch for those numbers because I used to do a lot of stereo conversion roto. I want to point out that I have sped up various parts of this video, including this roto, because I don't think you want to watch me roto this whole girl by hand. It took me about 30 minutes to finish rotoing her completely, and I don't know that that is time best spent uh, watching me make paint dry. So the idea here though is essentially that you want to roto paper doll style. So I'm going to draw a separate shape for her fist. I'm going to draw a separate shape for her forearm. I'm going to draw a separate shape for her upper arm, for the upper part of her torso, um, for her pelvis, and for her legs at the joints. So paper doll style means splitting things up at the joints. It seems like you're doing more work, but you're actually saving yourself tons of time. If you tried to draw an outline around this entire girl, you'd be having a pretty bad time. So again, we're using the same techniques that we used for her head. So we're tracking forwards and backwards, and we are adjusting the shape as we go. We can either do that at the same time, or we can track first and do the roto on top of our tracking data. We can also adjust the roto and then retrack over the top of everything to get slightly better results if we feel like we will get better results that way. Mocha gives you tons of flexibility. Don't feel like you need to be put in a box or that you have to deal with the results that you get right out of the gate. You don't. That is the power that you have with Mocha. You have the power of adjustment. You have the power of making artistic decisions. Because really, a computer is never going to replace the artist. Now I'm just going to finish this up by rotoing the back of her hair here as it moves over the back of her body. And we're going to start to export this shape data. Now when we export it, we're going to do all visible layers, copy to the clipboard, go back over to After Effects. And just like this, we're going to make sure we're on the first frame and go to Edit, Paste, Mocha, Mask. And if we've done everything correctly, our shapes will move really nicely inside of After Effects from a little bit of work inside of Mocha. So you can see that they're meant to work together really, really well. If we had done any edge feathering in here to account for some of her motion blur, then I would want to have pasted this in as an effect to respect that edge feathering. But we didn't because I didn't really feel like it was necessary. But what happens if we want to try to use the mask tracker to this very th same thing? I kind of want to show you what that looks like. So let's go over here and let's grab our pen tool. And let's draw a shape around this girl's arm. And now let's try to track this forward using the mask tracker. So we're going to select our mask. And we're going to just select track forward just right here. And you can see that it doesn't stick on at all. And the reason for that is it really, really shines on rigid objects. Like if I wanted to put it around the bag that she is punching, that would be a much better choice. But for her body, 
the mask tracker inside of After Effects or Premiere is just not going to cut it for you. When you need to do this sort of complex roto, you need to use Mocha for After Effects, Mocha Plus, or Mocha Pro in order to get high-end articulated masking for your quickly moving, organic, and complex objects. That's not to say that one tool is better for the other. You want to use the right tool for the job. Now, we can also use unlimited roto shapes and tracks in our shots. And I just want to show you some brief customer examples of multiple roto shapes, in this case for stereo conversion with identity effects, and also for multiple screen inserts, as seen in this Conan shot right here. So the possibilities are limitless. I do want to talk about some of the dedicated roto tools that we have inside of Mocha for After Effects. So inside of Mocha for After Effects, we have tools like the Transform tool where you can select multiple or single points at once and you can shear and move them in perspective. We also have a dope sheet where you can get access to all of your tracking keyframes and then your shape keyframes on top of those as well so that you have all of your tracking data frame by frame and then your every single keyframe that you made on top of your shape like on this head here. We also have the auto stabilize tool which basically allows you to see where your roto shapes are off by using a pan around your shape. And this allows you to really correct your shapes based on where they are changing and where they are changing the most so that you get the most out of your keyframes. We also have X-blinds, right? So X-blinds are you relax for curves, you pull tight for corners. I find them very fast for roto, but we still have beziers if you want to use them. You have to adjust the handlebars individually, and I feel like they take a little bit more time to use. So for fast roto, I use X-blinds. We also have the ability to change the spline color and the fill color, matte color, whatever you want to call it, inside of our shape tools. We have layer management tools that allow you to group them, and then we have masking tools that allow you to see what your masks are doing. So you have a lot of dedicated roto tools, including the grid and surface tool, which allow you to see what your track looks like. You just don't have these tools available with the mask tracker. So upgrades are available to Mocha for After Effects that ships with After Effects. We have something called Mocha Pro and Mocha Plus. Um, Mocha Pro contains the insert tool, the remove tool, the camera solver tool, the lens tool, and the stabilize tool. Mocha Plus has the lens tool and the camera solver tool in it, and then Mocha for After Effects that I've been showing you only has the clip tab, the track tab, and the adjust track tab, which Mocha Plus and Mocha Pro also contain. But Mocha for After Effects only exports to After Effects. So if you're interested, you can make a very inexpensive upgrade to Mocha Plus, or you can take the leap and go into Mocha Pro, which is meant to save you tons of time in your paint and insert work. I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and if you guys have any questions, please let us know. We are happy to help you, and we are here to help you learn.